Look at that fancy shit. Are you good with that? It kind of looks like that. This guy drove 15 hours just to crimp wires. <laughs> <laughs> guys so you saw in the previous video we are doing a holly on the car because uh, the stock ECU has given me way too much trouble and uh, yeah forget that shit so here's all the wires I pulled out of the car my little rat's nest you know when you add stuff over time it just it adds up you know it's a bunch of shit so we are redoing pretty much everything at this point um, we're gonna keep the fuel pump relays that Joe did because we still got the triple pump hat for now I, oh, I did order that pump, by the way, but they're not coming until September, so we have to use this fuel system. All right. <laughs> so, uh, more upgrades coming soon. Uh, so, we're redoing all the power cables right now. And uh, so, we're going to run some power and ground up here again, like we had before. This is all the stock stuff. And so, we're not sure what we're going to do with that yet, because pretty sure we're going to use the factory... Uh, BCM and fuse box to control like the windows and the door locks You know on an older car it's easy because you can just run switches for the windows But on these cars if you know when you shut the door the window has to go up like half or a quarter of an inch To seal it so and we don't really know how to wire that up Separately by itself without using the factory stuff So some of the stuff like if we can take all this stuff out We're gonna take all that out, but a lot of the stuff we still don't know Without breaking out a bunch of wiring diagrams and taking forever, we don't know exactly what runs what. I know that this fuse box gets power from the front fuse box, um, and then it sends power over there. So like I said, we're not completely sure, so we don't want to mess with that too much. But anyways, you got everything ripped out. There's the factory engine harness. Now, this is a Gen 3, and Holly only makes currently a Gen 2 Coyote harness. So... A few things for people that are wondering. The coil plug does not plug in, so we're gonna do something about that. Um, it comes with, obviously, we have to order this separately. Fuel injector harness, that plugs in, obviously, because it's made by Holly. Um, but the biggest things are, down there, got the crankshaft position sensor. This is completely different than a Gen 2. It's got a different reluctor wheel on it, pulse ring, whatever you wanna call it. This is 58 tooth, a Gen 2 is 36 tooth and they both use different sensors. This is a three wire sensor and a gen 2 is a two wire sensor So if you come over here So where's this guy at? It's here somewhere There it is. So that's your crankshaft sensor. If you had a gen 2 coyote this harness would plug directly in But this is only a two wire and like I said mine's a three wire So we're gonna attempt to add the third wire and wire it in straight to the holly and see if we can make an output for it um, that's the cool thing about holly you can literally add any sensor you want and create an output in holly for it but if that doesn't work i did order a gen 2 reluctor wheel and a gen 2 crankshaft sensor if that doesn't work um, another one is on the gen 2 your camshaft position sensors are actually on the back of the heads on the gen 3 it's on the top of the valve covers so once again where is the camshaft sensor so many damn sensors. Um, there it is, intake cam sensor. So obviously that plug's different, um, but it's the same amount of wires. So uh, working with my buddy Colby in Canada, he thinks we can wire that one up. So that one is to be determined as well. We don't know about that one for sure. Um, cylinder head temp, that one actually slides on but doesn't clip in. So we're gonna take the factory clip off the OEM harness, and those are just two wires. So that one, cylinder head temp sensor is pretty easy. Um, we still got to make the charge pipe, but Mr. Streetcar Joe is still dying at the moment. Just kidding, he really is sick, but he's getting better. Um, so we still got to remake the charge pipe, so we'll probably do that last. This harness does come with a MAF sensor, so we can just actually use the MAF, and, and we can add an IAT sensor if we want. Um, what other things don't plug in? There's a few of them for sure. So, 
pretty much the goal here is to run the power and ground up to the front today, get the uh, actual Dominator ECU mounted, and then start working on how we're gonna actually pin everything out. So we gotta run like trans brake still, we gotta do trans temp sensor, uh, we gotta run a switch for the fan. I did order a switch control panel That'll go up on the cage, but it's getting made right now. Those are built to order and it's still about a week out. So we technically don't even have any switches to test anything this weekend, but we may be able to like rig something up. But yeah, this is the OEM harness. So like I said, essentially, I think this one's for the camshaft sensor. We're going to cut that off and tap that in or pin it to the holly. Hopefully that works. And then same thing with the crankshaft sensor, wherever it is. I think it's this one. I think this is the crankshaft sensor. So same deal. And then this is cylinder head temp sensor. That one should work pretty easily. It's just two wires, nothing too crazy. But my boy Danny over here drove 15 hours to help me. Uh, if you guys don't know, what is your Instagram? Is DJ Wiggs? Yeah. Is there an underscore or something? DJ underscore. DJ underscore Wiggs. Go follow him now or unsubscribe from the channel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but look at all this shit he brought. I had this damn place so clean. But anyways, uh, Danny has been a huge help with Coyote Direct. We've been setting up a bunch of stuff, and we are working on a bunch of things that we can't say. But if you've ordered a Turbo 400 or a Power Glide swap from me, he's the one that's been making your lines. Where are they? They're there. So he's been doing all the badass crimping on the lines, and we only send PTFE for the trans cooler lines, unlike some other companies that give you the option. We only send PTFE with the derail coolers, but uh, Danny's been a huge help with Coyote Direct so far, and uh, we have some other huge plans. But anyways, right now he's crimping the power cable that we're going to run up front. And we're just going to keep going on that. Look at this. If you guys have never seen it, this is how they, they crimp, which we'll show you guys later how to use it. But you can do PTFE crimped fuel lines, so we can make our own fuel lines. We've done some fuel lines. Uh, this is how we do all of our CO2 lines for the turbo kits. And then this is how we do the trans cooler lines, too. So... Pretty cool stuff. We gotta get to work. All right, so to make our lives easier, because the stock alternator has a pulse width module in it, we got a Mechman alternator. They make custom alternators. Luckily, someone had one in stock, or you can order it directly through Mechman, but it's just a single wire with a trigger for the alternator. So we're gonna end up pulling the stock one off and get those swapped out. And we already ran our power cable all the way to the back from the alternator. So alternator is gonna have direct power from the battery. And then we started running, which I guess you can't see, but we did start running our main power and ground that we're gonna have some firewall, little bulkhead connectors on somewhere up there on the firewall. I don't know where yet, but we'll get those on, but I'm gonna get this alternator off first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so we got the new Mechman alternator on a little bit ago. Had to run to Home Depot, Harbor Freight, then Home Depot again because we forgot a few things. Um, but a few things. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's try and zoom in. Well, maybe. Okay, not. <laughs> Anyways, so we got a main cable on the alternator and then also the trigger wire for it. They are loomed up we haven't obviously zip tied it up because we're kind of just running everything but anyways that main cable goes all the way back to the battery and then we got trigger wire that's going to go to the uh switch panel that we're going to have up top and then we just installed these little terminal little terminals uh danny cheaped out on me and couldn't find a black one so we just have to remember which one's positive and negative but they'll have a black and red wire coming out of it so we'll know which one's which so I ran that one to the starter. Danny's running the 
sense wire for that one, which needs 12 volt source. And then you can see that's how they come through on the inside. And then obviously they go back to the battery. It's always good to have a ground straight from the battery. And then obviously in the back, this is how it's always been done, but we've got the battery grounded to the roll cage because the roll cage is welded to the chassis for a really good ground. Um, we did run these two smaller wires are for the Holly power. So if you guys end up doing a Holly or any aftermarket ECU, you typically want to run them, they say straight to the battery for a clean source. You don't want to run that uh, through like the on off. So clean source of power and ground for the Holly. And pretty much we just have to trim these to fit one's alternator and then one's power and ground to those terminals up front. You gotta trim those to fit, put lugs on them. We'll probably leave those for now. It's not a big deal. Um, I think after we do this starter wire, it's Holly time, right? Yep. So few things with the Holly that we have figured out. Talked to you guys earlier about the crankshaft sensor, which that one we may have a fix for. If not, we're going to go to a Gen 2. Another difference is, I guess, maybe get the camera in there. The oil filter on a Gen 3 has a oil pressure sensor, which obviously everybody does but it also has an oil pressure solenoid that has lower, is it lower oil pressure at the low RPM? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess to help with economy and some other bullshit. So the problem is there's really no way to wire that into the Holly, which I'm sure there is, but that's a pain in the ass and pointless on this car. Um, we need oil pressure, high oil pressure all the time. Uh, so we're actually, two ways you could do it. We just don't know if that way is a good way or not, but you could technically, I guess, pull out that solenoid and just block it off. But we think the best way is when we talked to Will at RPG, since he built the engine, he said, just go to a gen two oil filter adapter. Ford performance actually makes a better one. So we have that coming. That should be here by Monday or Tuesday, but that's no big deal. Cause that's only going to get an oil pressure sensor. That's easy. Um, this is how the regulator is now going to be mounted. So took it off the shock tower. It's going to be mounted under the intake manifold. And we'll show you guys that fuel system later in a different video probably, but uh, Danny's going to redo all the fuel lines and some super nice stuff. We'll show you guys that way later on. Um, so once he runs this last wire, we're going to start attacking the Holly and figuring out what we need to cut on the Holly system versus if our crankshaft sensor deal is going to work or not. So we'll keep you guys updated on that, but check out all this weight we lost. This is insane. Look at all this. And that's not even counting the front fuse box. Oh, I think earlier in the video we were going to keep this. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, me and my pro mod thinking in my street car, um, we decided to pull the BCM and all of the stock fuse box stuff out. I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> So you can see it's all gone over there. It's all gone over there. And obviously the front fuse box is not in the car. So we believe between myself, Danny and Colby helping us out, we think we can get the windows to work. So we're going to attempt it. And if we can't get the windows to work, well, then we're going full pro mod Lexan and carbon doors. <laughs> Hopefully we can get the windows to work because I really want to have windows. <laughs> windows are a street car, not AC. Um, so yeah, shit escalated real quickly around here. And that's what we're going with. So just keep you guys updated. The good thing though about kicking out all the stock stuff is literally, this has to be, what do we think, 40, 50? Yeah, at least. 40 to 50 at least, plus the front fuse box is heavy because it's got the engine harness, it's got a big fuse box, and it's got a lot, a lot of wires. So obviously we're adding a Holly, which that harness is super light, and we're adding a bunch of power cables, but it's going to be, I say we probably in the end will save 30 pounds, maybe 40 pounds with all that stuff gone, um, which is always good when you're trying, you know, you're always trying to lose weight to go faster. But uh, <laughs> this thing has escalated real quickly, you know. It's got uh, manual steering, manual brakes, a mechanical throttle, and uh, a holly going in. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll cut the trans tunnel next go full carbon. Who knows? Shit's getting weird around here. So, we'll keep you guys updated, but... <laughs> We're making some headway here. <laughs> What's so funny? It's still a streetcar, man. 
I swear on my mom, it's still a streetcar. You know? All glass, baby. <laughs> oh boy. They do have a lot of classes, like all steel, all glass, but they are fast motherfuckers. <laughs> They're really fast. So, um, yeah, we'll keep you guys updated. Oh, we did also, uh, this is the stock location ground that the stock one is, but we ended up changing it all. We're doing super nice cables on all this stuff, so we figured we may as well, which I'm sure the OEM one is actually really good, but that one's going to go from the cylinder head to the uh, original chassis ground there, so... Uh, chassis ground for the engine. We'll keep you guys updated. All right, so with the help of Danny and Colby, we think it's off Colby. Yeah, Colby's Colby's been Colby. looking at some wiring all night, <laughs> probably stressing out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so essentially, where's the? Is that the stock crank? That's stock. This crank. is the stock crank sensor. So like I said yesterday, it's a three wire. Stock one's two wire. So Colby traced it, and the yellow wire just needs 12 volt. The cam sensor, where's the cam one? It's on okay. So we're also doing the cam sensor at the same time, um, which that one lines up three wires for three wires. But this red wire from Holly in the cam sensor is actually a 12 volt power source wire. So what we're going to do is actually use this one to grab 12 volt for the crank sensor. So that's our plan. Like I said, if that doesn't work, we will just pin that back on the normal Holly connector and we'll switch to a Gen 2 reluctor wheel and Gen 2 crankshaft sensor. But this is what we're going to try. And then we've got to do a few more wires. We kind of pulled the harness out just to make sure everything reaches. Um, and I think Monday or Tuesday we should have the new oil filter adapter and then that'll just plug in. So we're going to do these two sensors first, then we'll do the cylinder head temp, and then we'll just keep making our way on the rest of the engine harness. All right, so we've been uh, Deutsch in the world here. I built this one actually, so that one's probably gonna fail. <laughs> <laughs> but Danny's been showing me how to Deutsch connect to everything, and he actually has these cool little white plugs that go in the back uh, for ones you're not using. So. Just something to remember is you got to use higher amperage ones, like the fan uses a 40 amp relay so it's higher amperage, so we use higher amperage uh, pins and Deutsch connector. But, so this one's going to be for our drive shaft speed sensor, which isn't here yet, so boom, that one will go there. Danny already did the trans fan, looks super clean, goes up in the car there. Um, we got the trans temp sensor running right off the trans there everything's not really zip tied up yet we're just kind of waiting until we get everything plugged in and connected um, and then we just did like I said the fan and Danny did this side so essentially what we're trying to do is create all of our connections down here and then run them up through the car so there's that one It'll obviously like zip tie up with everything super nice uh, so we're running everything up into the car and then we're going to have to start pinning everything to the holly. So we're trying to get all of our connections done down here. That way we can lower the car and be done down here for a while. But that's how the starter turned out. Nice lug on there with a, it's like a 45 degree angle. And this is going to be the little trigger wire. Obviously we'll loom all that and zip tie it up. But like I said, we're going to wait till everything's done. And here you can get a good look at the alternator, the Mechman, the one wire alternator. And yeah, we're just making some some progress here. So, trying to make everything as clean as possible and then as easily accessible as possible. Before, I didn't have Deutsch connectors on anything. I kind of had everything crimped, so you'd have to like cut and splice every time you pulled something out. So now, anytime I work on the car and you drop something, we can just unplug these. Or if we have an issue, we can just unplug it and move it. So, we're going to finish up down here, then we're going to lower the car and start working on the stuff on the inside. Oh, here's the, that's the other one Danny did, was the trans brake uh, Deutsch connector right there. So same thing, now when I drop the trans, I can just unplug that Deutsch, whereas before I had like the trans grounded over here somewhere, so I'd have to undo the ground and then cut the crimp. So now, it's all Deutsch connector, obviously we'll put some heat sleeve on that, and then we'll probably P-clamp it out of the way, but making some good progress here.
All right, guys. So we are now working on bringing everything into the um, body of the car. Uh, like I said, the wires are just freaking everywhere because there's a lot of wires. <laughs> so uh, let me show you what I just, you guys just saw me create a Deutsch connector for the steering wheel buttons. Um, so I got three, I got trans brake, bump, and scramble. And so I got them into a nice Deutsch connector. That way, if I need to remove all this stuff, I can literally just unplug it. It used to be crimped, I'd have to cut and then redo them. And then obviously we just left all the wires long and just hanging out until we actually map everything out. Um, what's cool about this is, you see that Deutsch connector? That's for my AEM CD7. Holly actually makes a nice plug and play harness. So I can keep using my AEM screen instead of having to buy a new screen. Um, pretty much everything is in the car now and has to be actually pinned and wired up to the Holly. So what we did is, and I don't know, this may help you or may not help you, but there's just so much wiring that we drew these maps. So you probably saw in the beginning of the video, the art of the video, whichever it was, was we ran, this is terrible, but <laughs> this is how we could just lay out how we ran all of our power wires. So that really helped us. So then we did the same thing today because we have, you know, now we've got a relay board. We've got a switch panel that's not here yet, but we just wanted to lay out like what has to go where. So like fuel pumps, um, since I'm sticking with the stock style hat for now, I just want to quit changing things because we've changed so much and that's why the car, you know, is down because we've just changed so much. So we're leaving the triple pump stock style hat and the relays that Joe already did. So since those already have a relay, a relay per pump, we don't have to re-add relays. We just run a trigger wire to the front. That's super easy. Um, so that one's easy. The next one, trans cooler fan. So we got to run that to our relay board, which is over here. Um, got to have a 40 amp relay for the trans cooler fan. And then obviously that'll go to the switch panel for fans to turn on. Drive shaft sensor, um, we already ran that in the car. Same thing, we gotta wire that to the Holly. Got your, it's, it's a nitrous solenoid, but it's essentially a solid state relay. That's in the car. That's gotta be wired to the trans brake. Um, and then we have a trans brake protection module that's also gotta be ran in there. And then we gotta run the bump. Um, but that's all in the car, ready to be wired up. Trans temp sensors in the car. Air shifter, the wire's already in the car. They gotta be ran to the Holly. Um, boost solenoid, we haven't done that one yet. Um, but that one's, actually no, we have the boost solenoid. We just have to make the Deutsch connector for it. Um, actually I wrote nitro solenoid, but we already did that one. And then we got our radiator fan, which we Deutsch connect you guys saw. And it's gonna go into the relay board because it needs a 40 amp relay. And so we have two options for relay boards. I was gonna do the nice leash electronics ones, but they are like eight to 12 weeks out. So there's this PDM that Danny brought me. If I can remember how to open it. Oh yeah. So it's got relays. These are only, I think they're 30 or 35s. These are 35 amp relays. So essentially we'd probably have to run two just to be safe for the fans. Uh, the downfall of this one is it's got connectors, so you'd have to pin the connectors. It'll look nice when it's done, but you gotta pin the connectors that go into this, but it is nice because it has fuses and relays, and it's got a power junction box there. <clears throat> That's our solid state relay. I was just kinda laying out, figuring out how to do this. Um, then obviously got the dominator there. The other one we have, I think it's over here. Um, when I was looking into leash boards, I don't know where I put it. There it is. Um, this is kind of like a leash board. This is just like a basic one. Um, the only thing that sucks about this one is it doesn't have fuses to it, so you have to wire in some fuses. Um, but this is a negative trigger, so actually everything would be triggered by the negative. Um, same thing, you just do it backwards. But the reason why I have this is because Matt, my buddy at BL Fab, I was like, man, I don't, I'm trying to wire up my car really soon but leash is like eight to 12 weeks out on these boards. He's like, well, I have one, just replace it. <clears throat> so he ended up sending me that. I replaced his and actually he already got it. That's how long this has been. But I was trying to kind of hurry to get parts in time. Anyways, so that's how we mapped everything out. 
Uh, we may be missing a few things, but that's essentially how it's mapped out. Um, we haven't worked on like windows or lights or any of that stuff. We're trying, we're really trying to get the engine going and then we'll add on the lights and the windows and all that stuff later because with us trying to attempt to use, for instance, like the Gen 3 crank sensor, we don't know if that's going to work. So we're really just trying to get the car running and then we'll worry about the lights and the windows and all that good stuff. Um, other thing we're waiting on is ended up doing the smart coils from Holly. So we're gonna have to wire those in. They just plug in here, but then you gotta pin them into the holly. Those should be here, I would say by Tuesday, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so this is our camshaft sensor. Got the fuel pressure sensor on there. That's nice, because that's gonna fit under the manifold now. Whereas like, typically on S550s, you'll see them like on the strut towers. But now, with the new taller manifold, we can put it, boom, right there. Hide all the harnesses through there, and then hide all the fuel lines through there, so it'll clean up the engine bay a lot. What sucks, another thing that sucks about these Gen 3s, is they have smart coil brackets that hold the little modules, but they don't have for a Gen 3 yet. So we're going to have to kind of come up with something to actually mount them. Um, and then I'm calling Firecore tomorrow to get uh, spark plug wires made for that. Um, but yeah. Essentially, the engine harness is done. I know it looks messy, but it not, it's not, and it's not all plugged in either. But everything that we had to change is is done. Like we had to redo the map sensor, so we redid that one to match the plug that we have. Um, like I said, we had to do the cam sensor, crankshaft sensor, cylinder head temp sensor, um, fuel pressure regulator actually plugged right in, oil pressure sensor. We're waiting for the Gen 2 oil filter adapter to come in. Uh, TPS we actually, had to, we actually had to change. So put this nice uh, 90 from Low Dollar Motorsports. That'll plug into the TPS now. Um, we had to change the map one, I believe, too. Other than that, like I said, the engine is done besides the smart coils. It looks messy, but it's all done at least. It's ready to go. Just needs to be plugged in, cleaned up a little bit. So <clears throat> I'm gonna end this video off here because we're done with the engine wiring and now we're moving on to um, tonight I'm going to start kind of placing the holly and that little carbon fiber piece where I want it I'm not actually going to mount everything I just want to get it so we have an idea how long all the wires need to be because all that stuff has to be plugged in so and wired to the holly um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video it is a lot of work I have a lot of respect for people like Streetcar Joe that can literally sit out and plan these wiring jobs out, it is not easy. And Joe does unterminated harnesses, which is essentially what we had to end up doing because none of that stuff worked for a Gen 3. So if you're going to do a Gen 3, either swap a Gen 2 in there and make your life easier, or if you really want to stick with the Gen 3, just do an unterminated harness and make your own harness from scratch because essentially that's what we've had to do anyways. You just have to do a lot of back-end work on researching what wires and what what wires go to what outputs on the holly. That's pretty much all you got to do, but it takes a lot of time. So like I said, I have a lot of respect for people like Streetcar Joe because I don't even have all the sensors that Joe does. Joe adds shock sensors, all four corners. Um, he's added temp sensors for the track, uh, temp sensors for tires before, um, ride height sensors. I mean, you start adding these sensors, it's... Typically three wires a sensor is how you can look at it. That is a lot of damn planning and wiring and then literally pin it all to the holly. So what's cool is these two plugs are the only ones that are gonna go to the holly. And then I'll show you on the dominator for those that haven't seen one before. You've got all these other, <clears throat> you've got four more ports for plugins that you can do. And so, they don't come with them, you have to buy them separately. They have the box here somewhere. Uh, where would it be? I don't know. It's here somewhere. It's all my old stuff. I really want to show you guys so you know what I'm talking about. So you don't think I'm too crazy. But I'm looking pretty crazy right now. I don't know where I put it. There's a lot of shit going on right now. Uh, boy. I don't know where it is, <laughs> but uh, anyways, so they sell the actual little box, little plugs that go into the holly, 
and yeah i'm looking for it i don't know where it is it's probably on one of the boxes somewhere but anyways uh, they sell the little plugs that go into the holly and then you can literally plug anything you want into the holly and that's what's super cool about it but so we've got to do some of that but what i'm saying is like I, I respect just how much goes into this just danny and i doing this ourselves it's literally been a we've probably put already see it's sunday we've probably already put not quite 48 hours because we haven't been here 24 hours a day but i'd say probably 30 to 35 hours already and we just have everything inside the car ran um like nothing's actually plugged in and working so and we probably have another 36 to 48 hours worth of work um but we're probably gonna stop well, he'll continue to work on this car tomorrow. Danny's only here for a couple days. He's got to go back to work. Um, but he's going to continue to work on my car. I've got to get back on Jack's car. Um, he did bring us some more parts. That's why I've kind of been waiting. Um, he brought us some axles. And we were waiting on a few other small things. But essentially, I've got this wheel liner pulled out. I don't know if I talked about it in the previous video, but um, we just pulled the whole front bumper off because... His cruise control is not working. There's a sensor up here that's not plugged in. And so we're going to try and fix that for him. Plus, we need access to the blow-off valve, which is right there. And then another thing we have to change, I've said it in a previous video, I believe, but whoever installed the turbo kit, with Aldo Weld's twin turbo kit, you're supposed to replace the steering shaft. And that is a stock steering shaft. And so Aldo takes them and actually changes them out. Does, I don't know exactly what he does to them. We'll see it when it gets here but it clears the header. So whoever installed this twin turbo kit tried to clearance the header by hammering it. It's still hitting on full turn. So um, Jack just wants to keep the car here and have me do everything. So we've got to do that. But you can see the front BMR springs already in. Uh, we've got to finish the other side, which takes literally like five seconds to put it back together. And then the biggest suspension job is we got to drop the whole cradle and do the bushings in the subframe um, i did get the compressor and tank mounted which you guys i don't want to say too much because i don't want to give it all away but you'll see in some other videos on jack's car but i did get that mounted and what i did was i actually left this a little loose so you when you slide the tire cover under it makes that thing super tight so that way you can slide the cover out don't have to cut it or anything just slide it in and out if you want to take it out um, i didn't do any of this mess so I just kind of left it alone for now but we did oh we were waiting on his magna ride sensors that's what it was so a couple of his magna ride sensors were broken when the car came in and he knew about it so I went ahead and found some used ones they're, they're not too expensive I think like 50 or 60 bucks a side so he had two broken ones but one of them they would only sell as a pair. I kind of did some eBay shopping to kind of save some money for them. But yeah, <clears throat> I got to get back on Jack's car. And so um, Danny's going to crank out some more on my car before he leaves. And then I don't know how much we're going to get done before he leaves. So then I'm going to be left with finishing this thing up. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Um, hopefully the car works. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, the only thing we don't know with switching out the sensors. But like I said, I do have a Gen 2. I know somebody that's done it, and they just they didn't even try to attempt what we did with wiring in the sensor. They literally changed the reluctor wheel and the crankshaft sensor to a Gen 2, and it worked. So I know that if this doesn't work what we did, we can. it sucks, but we'll have to pull the transmission, pull the flex plate, change the reluctor wheel, change the crankshaft sensor, and then put the trans and flex plate back up. Um, with the converter but at least we know that if it doesn't work we can do that and it will work so that's always the option but hope you guys enjoy this video i'll see you guys on the next one